wait for Christmas. So what did you ask Santa this year? I asked Santa for a MacBook, AirPods, night trainers, and other things. What did you ask Santa to bring? Well, I want an iPhone 13 Pro, Beats wireless headphones, and a PlayStation. Sounds great. So have you ever seen Santa come down the chimney? Hmm, I haven't. But the milk and the cookies are gone when I check in the morning. Santa's a bit too greedy, I think. Only leaves the crumbs. What about you? Nah, haven't seen it either. You want to stay up this Christmas Eve and catch Santa? I want to, but the thing is, our parents might take us for the midnight mass. <sighs> Even though I don't want to. I hope they're working this year for a change. Oh, I completely forgot about midnight mass. You want to go ask if they're working on Christmas Eve? Yeah, let's do that first. I hope they are. Mom, Dad, are you working on the 24th this year? No, you both must know by now, we don't work on the 24th. Well, why are you asking this now? <sighs> there goes our plan. Our plan flopped. What plans? We were planning on catching Santa Claus this year. Yeah, we were going to stay up, listen to him park his sleigh, and watch him come down the chimney and eat the cookies and milk. How many times have I told you? There is no Santa. But Mom, he's real. Santa ate the cookies and drank the milk we left for him last Christmas. Yeah, he didn't even leave the crumbs. When did you leave the cookies and milk? Oops. Well, we may have snuck downstairs after you both went to sleep. I left the cookies and milk by the fireplace for Santa to have, and it was gone by the time we woke up. How are you sure it was Santa and not someone else? Wait, no, you don't mean... Dad, you ate the cookies and milk we left for Santa. Grow up, Dad. Sorry, only the cookie. The milk was spoiled. No wonder why we didn't get the presents we asked for. Children, sit down. Let me explain it to you again. St. Nicholas was born on 15 March 270 AD in a place called Padra in Asia Minor near modern-day Turkey. Born to wealthy Christian parents who raised him up as a devout Christian, his parents brought him up to hold fast to church traditions. This included eating only one meal on Wednesdays and Fridays. Both parents of St. Nicholas passed away in an epidemic when he was still young, leaving all their possessions to St. Nicholas while being cared for by his uncle, who was the Bishop of Padra at that time. Growing up, St. Nicholas was driven to do acts of charity like taking care of the poor and needy, as well as giving up his possessions. An example of using his inheritance for the needy was when a father of three daughters lost his inheritance and possessions and was struck by poverty, who then decided to sell his daughters. Hearing about this, St. Nicholas went during the night and threw a bag of gold coins into the house through the window. The father used this money as dowry to marry off his eldest daughter. St. Nicholas did this two more times for the man's middle and youngest daughters. Eventually, for his youngest daughter, the man kept watch at night and saw St. Nicholas. He thanked the saint for his great generosity. The bags containing gold coins are said to have fallen into a pair of shoes which was kept to dry inside the house. This became the start of today's coin tradition of leaving stocking for Santa Claus to put presents in. Saint Nicholas also left gifts for poor children at night, but he would do this in secret so no one saw him. He would deliver presents alone and deliver presents as guided by the Holy Spirit. Later on in his life, Saint Nicholas was ordained as priest by his uncle Bishop of Padra, then elected as bishop. 
During his time as priest in the 4th century, persecutions arose. Romans captured St. Nicholas and tortured him. During the reign of Constantine, prisoners were let free, including St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas was seen as the guardian of the people in that area while he was still alive. St. Nicholas died on 6th December 343 AD in Myra, Roman Creek, now modern-day Turkey. After St. Nicholas's death, his popularity grew. Everyone heard about the man who helped out the poor in secret and started venerating him. As his popularity grew, the name St. Nicholas was translated into people's native languages. Hence came the name Sinterklaas in Dutch, which translates to St. Nicholas. Now, when the Dutch travelled to places like America during the 17th century for an ease in pronunciation, they translated the Dutch word Sinterklaas to Santa Claus in English for Americans to understand and the word Santa Claus just translates into Saint Nicholas. During this time, Coca-Cola in 1931 decided to use the image of Santa Claus and interpret him as a jolly, kind man in a red robe with a long white beard. This sensation took over America and everyone adored the new Santa Claus in the red robe as the advertisement grew, so did the place for the new Santa Claus in people's hearts. As this resulted in people writing back to Coca-Cola about any changes they noticed over the years. This place in people's heart for the advertisement Santa Claus also started shaping a new story, very much different to the original Santa Claus's life, who was Saint Nicholas. In 2001, the advertisement became an animation with a backstory of the now well-known story of the advertisement Santa Claus was shown as him living in the North Pole with the giant factory that makes presents for children all around the world, leaving the North Pole only on the 24th of December to deliver presents to children's houses in his sleigh, pulled by reindeers which will be parked on top of houses and came down the chimney and placed presents in the stockings hung over fireplaces. This advertisement Santa Claus had helpers in his factory who were called elves. These elves are also made as an ambassador for Coca-Cola, but later the well-known fissaging sprite was created in 1961. Sprite comes from the old French Estrut, the derivative of spirit. This became the elf character who helped the new Santa in his factory. Saint Nicholas, or Santa Claus, before advertisement, was led by the Spirit of God to give the poor children. He did it alone at night, so only God saw his kind acts. We get it now, Mom. So is the Santa Claus wearing a red robe and come down the chimney in his sleigh isn't real? Then what's the point in Christmas? Christmas is the birth of Jesus, the Saviour which the world waited for. Yeah, we know this 25th of December. Christmas, Joseph, Mary, Manger, Star, Angel, another crazy stuff. Yes. This is all correct, but don't take it so lightly. The word Christmas originally comes from the word Christmas, which is a word from the 12th to the 15th century. This means Christ's Mass. The meaning behind Christmas is not the celebration of Santa Claus from the North Pole, or even St. Nicholas helping the poor. It's about the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus was born for us in the manger at midnight, amongst the animals there, since Mother Mary and Saint Joseph could not find a room for them in the inn at Bethlehem, as explained 
in the Gospel of Luke, chapters 1 and 2. The birth of a Savior was prophesied by many prophets, like Prophet Isaiah. Then shepherds, told by an angel, came to see baby Jesus, along with the wise men who followed the star from the east. Christmas is the celebration of the birth of our Redeemer, being born to save us from our sins. In order for St. Nicholas to help the children and poor, Jesus needed to be born and teach us about humility, charity, giving to the poor, and helping the needy. Jesus set the example of helping the poor and needy as we hear from the Bible about Jesus visiting Zacchaeus' house or even showing compassion to the sick. These people were looked down upon and hated by the society. Jesus' life inspired St. Nicholas throughout his life and he tried his best to live like Jesus did. St. Nicholas did not create anything new, he only followed Jesus' examples. That makes more sense now. I'm glad you understood it. But not just that, lots of preparations are needed for the birth of Jesus. What do you mean by preparations? He meant Christmas decorations, but it's all up, so I guess that's it then. We're ready for Christmas, hooray! It's not all about the decorations. We need to prepare spiritually as well. Preparing for Christmas is not just about decorating the house and putting up the Christmas tree. We have to prepare spiritually as well. It's not just about enjoying food and spending time with family and friends. Our church teaches us to follow the liturgical season this month being the season of Annunciation, also known as the Advent season. This is further divided into four themes for four weeks, starting with the week of hope, followed by week of love, then week of joy, ending in the week of peace. Over this season, we are obliged to prepare ourselves spiritually through the sacraments such as participation in the Holy Mass, cleansing our soul through confession, along with fasting, prayer and almsgiving, in order to prepare our heart for the birth of Jesus. Small penance can be taken by children too, for example, giving up something you love, like chocolate or through good deeds like obeying your parents. We also make the crib as a remembrance of the birth of Jesus in the manger, as described in the Gospel of Matthew and Luke. So a crib isn't a decoration, right? But you said apart from the shepherds and the wise men, no one saw the manger. So how do we know the manger actually looks like our crib? Well. There is someone who saw the manger. It was St. Francis of Assisi. During his lifetime, three years before his death, he was inspired by the Spirit of God to visit the birthplace of Jesus in Bethlehem, Israel. After coming back from his visit to Bethlehem in the year 1223, St. Francis recreated the manger in a cave above Greccio, Italy. Two weeks before Christmas, St. Francis, together with his friend John, desired to celebrate Christmas in Greccio, where they brought to life the manger from Bethlehem as per St. Francis' desire, as St. Francis wanted to see the manger come to life with his own eyes. By bringing in real ox and donkey into the cave, bedding the floor with hay to recreate the stable, where baby Jesus laid. Finally, a statue of infant Jesus was placed on the hay. Thus, the town of Greccio became the new Bethlehem. Many were attracted to see the nativity scene. On Christmas Eve, a mass was held in the cave, along with a sermon 
by St. Francis. Whenever he mentioned Jesus or child of Bethlehem, he would lick his lips as though he could taste the sweetness on his lips. As it says in Psalms chapter 34 verses 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. At the end of Mass, St. Francis knelt to kiss the statue of infant Jesus and embraced it. While doing this, the whole cave became radiant from the light coming from the statue of baby Jesus as the statue came to life in St. Francis's arms. Some testifies that as the statue of baby Jesus came to life, a cry of joy from the baby was heard in the cave, as though baby Jesus awoke from his slumber while St. Francis embraced him. This must have been a way of Jesus showing his appreciation for St. Francis's efforts. During the 13th century, the concept of St. Francis's crib spread around the world and the custom of creating crib in churches and houses became popular. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for our presents. Don't say thank you to us. Say thank you to baby Jesus. With your iPhone and your MacBook and AirPods that Santa gave you. Santa? You believe in Santa? Yeah, everyone believes in Santa. You can't be serious. You must be kidding. Santa isn't real. <laughs>